डियर फ्रेंड्स डेली प्रेस इज फेमिलियर टू मी बट टूडे इट वॉज फेमिलियर टू मी इट इज फेमिलियर टू मी बट टूडे आफ्टर सेवन इयर्स इट्स लुक्स लाइक वेयर आई एम आई एम नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड I am not able to understand because I still feel that I am there in this notorious undercell. I am not able to come to terms with the reality that is in front of me even now, after twenty-four hours of uh, release. i am not able to adjust to the surroundings i only looked at the walls closed walls for all the seven uh, seven years and earlier i was there in the same cell for six, 17 months all together more than 8 and of years since the case was instituted 10 years ago 8 and of years i was in the same cell perhaps the entire world knew the case was a fabricated case even 10 years before but uh, there was no relief there was no relief even after a higher judiciary acquitted me discharged me it was like agni pariksha sita faced we had to go through twice mythological sita faced once but we had to face twice the same agni pariksha test with fire but today in i am in front of you my dear friends of the press after passing through the test two tests of fire test with fire <coughs> but unfortunately as an, as accused it was not only the test for a fire agni pariksha for us as accused in this case so called accused in this case it became agni pariksha for the higher judiciary itself in this case one judgment of higher judiciary acquitting us was not enough the higher judiciary itself is tested not just us but we came out successfully from this test and higher judiciary also came out successfully to deliver justice though justice delayed there is a old adage justice delayed is justice denied today we are happy perhaps happy with tears in our eyes not just because we are happy but it was not only test for us but it was a, it became a test for the higher judiciary you cannot produce, uh, pronounce judgment acquitting these people once you will have it will be tested again perhaps higher judiciary also pass the ag this agni pariksha i mean after this two tests that we passed successfully the the only institution that left out to be relied on for democracy 
for the people, the judiciary is also being tested now. Perhaps after this, the judiciary and we, the accused, punished during the process. Process itself, process of law itself is the biggest punishment. It should not be actually in a democracy. But now, I am, I am in front of you for, to say only one thing. I am not in a position to speak. I am not, in, in fact, a position to sit. I am sitting before you with tearing pains, shooting pains in my body. So I will be very short. I will say only a few words. First thing that I wanted to say is, I thank the press, Delhi, particularly Delhi Press and All India Press, for being supporting, supportive to me and to my family all through these 10 years. Maybe a section of press was not very happy to support, but a large section of Indian press, media, was supportive to us. This even I could understand from within my small prison cell, that there is hope in this country that the press is supporting the truth and facts, not Jian Sai Baba. If Jian Sai Baba stands for truth and facts, yes, Truth and fact is supported by a large section of media. That is a great hope for me. Inside the dystopian prison cell. And my family survived with hope because of you. I wanted to thank. That is precisely the reason, precisely the reason why I came. Instead of going to a hospital, to the doctors. First, I chose to come before you because you supported the truth and facts. And you, sp you published in support of the truth and facts. And today, judiciary also stood firmly, at least in my case, and hopefully, on many other cases and are on every way to give justice and stood for with, uh, the, with the kind of justice. And that is another hope that we have today in front of us. Along with this, I profusely thank you for being supportive to my family. And you have not left my family alone when my family is stigmatized, calling me a terrorist. Not only me being behind the prison bars, but my entire family was also stigmatized. My family could sustain and could stand up because of your support. I thank you. And I also wanted to thank you through you, my lawyers. Relentless struggles of my lawyers to establish the fact and achieve justice. Lawyers from Delhi, lawyers from Mumbai, lawyers from Nagpur, all worked together. It was also a big test for them. And it was a relentless struggle. You know the lawyers. I will not take all the names. It will be very difficult to take the large team of lawyers who stood with us to bring justice to us. It, perhaps it has become a case a bigger case, biggest case, 
in the country, biggest political case in this country, where the prosecution wanted to suppress by using all kinds of illegal, immoral means. And it was a long struggle for the lawyers. I especially thank two lawyers, though it's a long, it's a very long uh, list of uh, names. A senior advocate of Mumbai High Court, Subodh Dharmadikari stood up and said that I will fight this case without taking one rupee, pro bono. He is a very aged and senior most lawyer in Mumbai High Court. And when the first trial came, he was not well, he was hospitalized. But he, from the hospital he came and argued. When the second day he is also tested, he was also tested. He again came, though bedridden, and argued before the judges. And I thank him. Another lawyer, very interestingly, who defended me during my trial in the trial court. Today, he is behind the bars. It is Sri Surendra Gardling. He is in the Elgar Parshat case, languishing behind the bars only for one reason. He stood for me. He argued most effectively in the Sessions Court during the trial. Of course, with all his skills, a human rights lawyer of 35 years of experience, he presented before the court in such a way that there was nothing in the case. Of course, lawyers, human rights lawyer Surendra Gardling did not fail. It is a session court which we failed, gave a judgment against the law of the land. And during the trial, certain police officers appeared and, and threatened my lawyer, Surinder Gadling, after Sai Baba, we will see you. And Sai Baba got conviction. And within months of conviction, Surinder Gadling was arrested in another fabricated case. And more than five years is languishing. He's an eminent lawyer. And a human rights lawyer who also did pro bono for poor Adivasis and Dalits and other poorer sections. Thousands of cases he won for the people. So here the regarding is today. I am very sad that even before, uh, 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 even uh, uh, speaking in front of you, that my lawyer, most effective, who is the human face of, of law of this country, one of the human faces, is languishing in a, in, a, in a jail. And I wanted to tell you that my story of suffering, I wanted to share my story of 10 years of suffering. Just before that, two more things I wanted to say before I come to the kind of suffering that I have gone through. Today, Surendra Gardling, my lawyer, who defended me, is facing the same problem that I, that I have been facing in 10 years. He has developed a serious heart condition. He is in Taloja jail, has developed a serious heart condition. He also recently started falling unconscious like me. Eight and a half years I was falling unconscious in the undercell of Nagpur Central Prison. Recently, the medicines were denied to Surendra Gadli. The life-saving drugs prescribed, prescribed by the government hospital, the 
life saving drugs are denied when the family sends the drugs life saving medicines it is denied when the family is sent by speed post they again the medicines it was sent it, uh, it, it uh, the medicine was missing and letters were returned same thing that happened with me when i f to prevent falling unconscious i used to get one tablet in my in the prison for the last 7 years vertigo tablet syncope to control syncope that very tablet is denied to lawyer surender gadling the human rights lawyer surender gadling today you fall unconscious but you cannot take this medicine the simple tablet of etigo everybody knows and uh, facing with this kind of situation recently elai surender gadling filed a case attempt to murder him against the prison authorities of toloja prison central prison perhaps you check with the court high court there it is attempt to murder case he filed why he is simply denied medicines a case under section 307 is filed by him from the jail against the prison authorities who are denying him life saving drugs this is i mean i have, i am remembering this in front of you because this all happened to me still i survived i don't know how i survived myself perhaps the only with the hope that i can come back one day and i work for the same people who i have been working with all my friends and comrades who have been working with me today standing with me even after 10 years of the suffering and uh, another thing that i wanted to say one of the co accused in my case whom you, i never knew he never knew me before the case before conviction we came to know each other only when we are bundled together into one cell after conviction was given and ordered to that person today pandu narote is who died in custody of a simple fever how could he die in today's modern with modern medicine available die of a fever and interestingly the first question he asked me why uh, the question he asked me on 7th march 2017 when we were brought together and bundled together into one cell what what do you uh, what is the meaning of judgment what happened to us he did not know what is law what is case what is court nothing as you and designated most primitive tribes of the country he belonged to that most primitive tribe he never knew any city any i think he never went out of his village from gachurwali he died in front of my eyes despite many reminders he was not taken to the hospital till the last moment where he was bleeding profusely from eyes and urine we threw in the in urine and about to die in a few minutes he was taken to the hospital after prisoners raised their voice and he was killed it was a, it is a state murder you can't say that he's just died of swine flu or fever we don't know because till the last minute we, there was no blood report on the swine flu only after death it was declared he died of swine flu we don't know what 
he died of really my sufferings you perhaps would know but as a human rights activist all through my life i have taken the sufferings of all the poor people as my own suffering and when i am thrown into the jail the people have taken my sufferings as their own sufferings it's a reversal of the process that happened as a human rights activist i was I have to take the sufferings are worn by the people as my sufferings but it is the people who are. there was no accessibility within that uh, under cells uh, one cell of wheelchair wheelchair could not go to the toilet there was no separate toilet one hole was there but here the wheelchair could not reach there was an obstacle two adivasi boys in my case first fandu narote and later on the rest they literally carried me to the toilet seat every time lifting and to give a bath also i can't come out of the cell because there are obstacles in my wheelchair they have to lift again i can't go to mulakat place without being lifted again how many times they can these boys can lift me i can't go to online mulakat without being lifted by two people i can't go to the prison hospital without being lifted there is not a simple ramp this is the kind of accessibility condition in that prison but apart from that accessibility i could not even go and fetch a glass of water the wheelchair doesn't move within the cell and how long how many years one can stay like that with life and as a result of this as a person who went inside the jail was forced into the into the jail without any health problem except my childhood polio <coughs> effect effect i had no other pro, uh, uh, disease today i am in front of you though alive but each and every organ failing failing me i simply tell you in one minute the kind of things that i am facing today my heart is today is work functioning with 55% capacity i acquired i don't know how which is called hcm hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in a severe condition and the left part of the heart is only functioning with 55% and doctors say if it drops a few uh, points by it, uh, the the percentage of function drops by few points <coughs> you will not survive and i been facing syncope attacks i fall unconscious these episodes are repeating but never i have been given a treatment to for this only they conduct us some tests but never any treatment they gave me only painkillers painkillers four five six types of painkillers and you know on march uh, sorry may 9th 2014 when i was arrested the police dragged me with my left hand i cannot raise my left hand today you can see it is swollen even after 10 years when i came here comrade raja the first question was why you uh, is your left hand swollen he saw
you can see that, you know, five muscles and the entire nervous system was broken because I was mishandled and dragged while being in the police custody soon after the arrest, carried away from Delhi to Nagpur by flight and from there to Aheri by car with 2,000 commandos following in a queue. And during that process, my hand, they dragged and the entire nervous system was broken from neck, which connects to the brain, to the shoulder. No treatment was given, it was swollen like this. For nine months I suffered during undertale period. And after nine months, when I was taken there to the hospital, it is too delayed, we cannot revive the nervous system and muscles now. That was the doctor's response, our government uh, doctors. And when I was given bail out, the treatment was going on here, and the doctors planned for surgery, and I got the conviction, and I, once again I was hurled into the, back into the same cell. And since then, I've been suffering with pain, shooting pain in my left hand to the left leg, my polio affected left leg. I have muscle, I have acquired muscle spasms, spasmatic attacks, paralyzing me. Doctor doesn't come. I, was, I, I, I would not take, be taken to the doctor, the hospital, just across the under cell also. You suffer. Huh? That's why I compared myself with Sita, mythological Sita. <coughs> I am being suspected. Lord Rama suspected Sita. Like, then I have, because of the food that I could not eat or could eat, gallbladder uh, uh, gathered stones and sunken. Then I, it affected pancreas. Now I am suffering from gallbladder stones and acute chronic pancreatitis. I can't digest food. I can't eat. And then in one MRI, they found that there is a cyst in the brain, in my brain. And in another scanning, they found that there are cysts in my kidneys. They were nothing. I was going annual medical checkup all those years before my arrest. I had nothing. I was healthy. I, I never used to take even one tablet. If there is a uh, headache or something, my wife used to give some herb. Never took any tablet. So, uh, the doctors prescribed several things, government doctors. Holter monitoring of heart should be conducted. This was prescribed four years ago. Till today, that Holter monitoring of heart is not conducted. Another doctor prescribed sleep apnea test, saying that you have acquired uh, obstructive sleep apnea, you cannot sleep properly and all. The test is not done in seven years. It was prescribed seven years ago. Till today, the test was not conducted. Can I have some water? Another <coughs> doctor prescribed surgical repair of nerves and muscles to stop at least the pain and improve the functionality of my hand. It is not being done, it is not even planned, not even discussed about. There are other tests, not done. Why? The most criminal gangs, who gangsters who live in the same prison, they get priority treatment, in, even in private hospital. 
with lakhs of rupees spent. Of course, all the poor people, the jail is filled with SCs, STs, OBCs, minorities. They never get any treatment. Perhaps I am amongst them, that's why I did not also get. Or perhaps they consider me that I am the biggest terrorist in the world. Because of that, I, I did get that. Even the medicines that are sent by Vasanta, it was very difficult to reach. Initially, I never used to be given. After my hunger strike for 10 days, which went around to the, all the departments of the governments and UN. Then they started giving the medicines. When, whenever she sent, she sent regularly, but after 10 days, after 15 days. You go without medicine for your heart within 10 days, even the medicine, those medicines which are sent by your family. And it, is hap it was happening to a person who has support from you, the me media. It was happening. Of course, you have focused about all these issues, but still they could do it. Because the word from within jail will not come out that is their confidence. I wanted to share one emotional, as a human being, point with you. Finally, this is the last point that I wanted to mention because I am feeling very tired after seven years of continuous imprisonment and the last three days of struggle to come out. <clears throat> My mother passed away while being in prison on 1st August 2020. Being a disabled child from since childhood, my mother brought me up with great care. She took me in her arms to the school. My child should get education. That is the only goal for her. When she died, I was not allowed to see before her death, I was denied parole to go and see her. After death, I was denied to attend her funeral. And after funeral, post funeral function of rights, I was denied parole by the authorities, prison authorities, prison department, government, and courts. Who is the criminal accused in this country who are denied for this kind of rights? Is there anyone? If I am teaching in Delhi University today, or I was teaching 10 years ago, till 10 years ago, it was my mother's uh, dream. Who is an illiterate village woman? Today, you can see, and as a human rights activist, I could see all women across the country, the poorest of the poor, Adivasi women, Dalit women, they only desire only one thing, my child should get education. We will not get land, we will not get anything, we know. But 
We want our child to get education. It was the same dream my mother had. Was there any necessity that I never deserved to serve my mother at the last days? She died because of only one thing. Because I was implicated in this case and incarcerated without any facts. And she asked and asked for, till the last moment, she asked that she wanted to see me. That was the only desire she had. See, the state is there to serve the people. The state should not be there to punish the people and crush the humanity. Humanity needed state at one point in the history of development of human species to serve them, to organize them the, into a society, to have a kind of a society where there are no problems. And of course the state become, in the course of time, the brutal oppressor itself. The brutal oppression should have, the state is formed by a contract of the people to stop disorder, anarchy, and the state became the anarchy itself. And now it is crushing humanity. Brutally, you see the crowded prison where I, was, I came from. It was a prison for 1,500 people. To say. How many people there are? 3,200 3, people in the place of 1,500. And they are struggling and fighting with each other like dogs for sitting place sleeping place for water, no facilities were there. There was no space even for to sit and sleep. Six feet is not there for each prisoner to sleep. So for fire place to sleep, they fight like dogs. This is the kind of, you know, in humanity, this is the humanity for the entire country, not for the prisoners who are fighting like dogs. Subhuman conditions, inhuman conditions. I'm sorry, I became emotional before you. But you are my brothers and you help my family, you become part of my family. That's why I shared all this with you. Thank you very much.